So let's do like this. Let's build some things out real quick. I'm only going to touch on this now because you guys have seen this lesson. Some of you that are new haven't seen it. But All right, so if I go like this, touchy. Price comes back over here. And then I go like, hey, get back over here. Then I go like this. What I have basically, and remember with gaps, we're just drawing in the upper third, right? So what I have is a gap swap. So we've all seen this. We've all done this work. We'll be doing it again. All right. So what I have there is a is a gap swap at a bar level. Now also, if I go like this, And we're going to say this is a tail, okay? And then I zoom it. And this is all not just price bar reading. This is... You know, sellers hit it, made a new low. Sellers tested it. Boom. This is a swap also. Just call this a tail swap. I'm highlighting... The main ones, if you guys remember from our confirmation work, our price confirmation work. But I still want to get something across here. So what I have here is an outside bar now. Yeah, review is good. See, I'm going to hit it from different angles. I'm glad you, you got the right spirit there, Edward. That's why you just always keep on learning. I keep on learning, too. That's the secret. To never treat it as a review. Just treat it fresh. All right, so this also... is a swap and this is a outside bar swap so what it's telling us is that sellers reached up went lower came back tested and got whacked 
All right, so what I'm looking for on this side is normally a gap to show me that they got whacked, okay? So on the right side of the pivot, you know, I'm looking for some kind of gap to, to tell me something about, you know, sellers that prove themselves. And the beauty of these is it usually happens fast and it usually gets everybody just, even if you weren't convinced the market was going down, when this happens, it, it usually is that last photon, as Tim would put it. It's usually that last, you know, even if you were looking for a long, when it does that, you're like, oh, all right, never mind. All right. So these were our basic confirmations. All right. Now, if I have something like this. pretty getting better at this huh. if I have something like this we can call this Valley Mountain Swap, right? All right, everybody on the same page with me so far? Yeah, okay. Now, one of the things we've... One of the things I'm trying to get across here is that there's some common threads that run through everything, okay? There's some common threads that run through everything. Principles. Common threads. Number one. Relative, meaning these are all the same. They're just different amounts of time. That's all. It's like a hologram. One one piece contains the other. If you went in a smaller time frame here, you would see this with the median line set. If you went in a smaller time frame here, you would see this with a median line set. If you went in a smaller time frame here, you would see this also with the median line set. So one of the things we've done is even at a bar level, swings are still swings. So even at a bar level, what we're saying is the top of this wide range bar, structure-wise, is a high on a relative scale. The top of this tail is a swing high on a relative scale. Top of this outside bar is a swing high on a relative scale. All right. So this swing is the same as this, is the same as this, is the same as this. Now also, swing cycles runs through everything. 
everything. So everything's in swings. I keep saying that. Swing cycles. Runs through everything. What else? What else is going to run through all of this, whether it's a bar level, a minor swing, or a major swing? And so I'm trying to give us another way to, to hold and view markets as they're rolling. What else runs through every one of these things? Nobody? Nobody, nobody? Edward's going to be brave. A pivot? Yeah, they, they, they all have actually two pivots, which are comprised of a swing. But I'm looking more principle-wise. So no matter what size we go to here, yeah, they will all have a center. That's already, yeah, okay, expand contraction, okay? That's one of them. And you're right about the other stuff, but I, I want to get um, a nice big broad stroke, okay? And so the other thing that's going to run through all of these, all of these, is what we've been talking about. The three types of trades. That was easy. How did you guys miss that? <laughs> How did you guys miss that? All right. So type one along the process to push. All right. Type one to push. Type one to push. Type one to push. Nate says, I would not have gotten that with 20 guesses. I know, and I've been sitting there talking about it for two weeks, and I say it over and over. And that's all right. You know, it takes takes time. You know, we have our I, – I do a lot of stuff. That's why I keep – that's why review is good, right, right, Edward? That's why review – because, you know, it's really hard to get across all this stuff. And so, you know, we just keep hitting it from different angles. And even though – and the reason I, I set it up like this – even though I cover a lot of things, lines, structures, da, 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 da. You know, we have to have some kind of ground to hang on to. There has to be some common principle that runs through every single thing we do. And so this is why I set it up like that. So no matter what we're looking at, no matter what it is, right, it's going to have this involved in some way. Relative. Because, you know, this is this. And the more we understand that, the more we don't have to wait for this bar to exactly look like this bar and that bar to exactly look like that bar. And, you know, we're sitting here with an instruction book. Because, you know, if price were just running that cleanly all the time, it'd be easy. You know, we can just write some computer models and, you know, let the program run. But price flows. You know, price flows. It's got different different time things going on here. If it was just one bar we had to pay attention to. Okay. So expand, possible continue. Expand, possible continue. Expand, possible, continue. Expand, possible, continue. Possible reverse of the gap swap. Possible reverse of the tail swap. Possible reverse of the outside bar swap. Possible reverse. And any, you know, you draw a median line. These options, this process is built into it. These, these basic options, right, is built into it. You know, then I went and got all complicated last week and talked about a sub option down here and a sub option down here. But these are built into it. OK. All right. Now. Yeah, if it's easy, there's no money in it. Right <laughs> now. Now that we've got sort of a basic picture. 
then we can learn to – here, we'll take a picture of this because, you know, we'll, we'll come back to this. We can learn to put some of this in context to where, you know, it makes sense. Does anybody remember where I like to see – one of these outside bars or tail swaps happen? Does anybody remember? Because we did a whole thing on that, and it was like, uh, it, it, it makes a pivot, but there's a place in the swing. There's a place in the swing that I like to see it happen. That, 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 that I will use for confirmation. Yeah, it's somewhere near the end. And usually, usually when price is, let's say, on its way up, and it, I mean, it just won't quit, right? It just won't quit. And you've been waiting to get short. It just won't quit. You think, okay, this is it. It's coming down. And uh, no, it just won't quit. See, there's your outside bar. So somewhere near the end, and not just near the end. Also, you know, when you're absolutely convinced yourself that this market's never coming back, I mean, that's when things turn. That's, that's capitulation. When, when everybody's like, you know, it's beyond all reason, it seems. All right, so now let's look at this. Let's look at this in this market. All right, let's do a follow-up to that previous uh, clip we took out of the live session in New Zealand. One of the main points I was trying to get across is the principles that run through everything. So in this follow-up, we'll follow up the New Zealand, and then we'll go find some actual examples of these so you can have them to look at. But just remember, I'm not building a setup or anything like that. It's not something to just memorize. When you understand the principles, you can create all you want. So, for instance, what's going on with these things is that there's effort, for instance, to push it down. Then that effort gets reversed. And so that is solid information about buyers and sellers. And so this is the stuff a pivot's made of. And we can use this at a bar level for confirmation that a pivot's being made. So let's go take a look. And, Euro. and this is something maybe we'll do in another post. We'll talk about the minor and the major. All right, so let's go see if we can see an example as a follow-up to what we were doing. I think we left the market somewhere around there. Now, if we took this swing to a median line on it, you notice now we're approaching the upper parallel. So this is where we would pay attention. So this was after the video was made. Price looks like it's starting to roll over up here. And there you have your outside bar. And then you want to see what happens afterwards. Ah, new high. So, this kind of thing, don't, don't just see it as a, as a setup to memorize. It's telling us something real about where the buyers and sellers are. See, look, even this tail is telling us, look, Buyers stepped down, made a new high. Buyers are still here. So this is a lot different than prediction or anticipation. It's just what is. There's a fact. These buyers stepped in and made a new high. So this becomes a great reference point. We don't know what price is going to do. We don't have to know what price is going to do. As it gets here, now there's a lot of times right here I'll use this for a buy. But like I said, we're looking at the possibility of a pivot being made. This is the kind of thing a pivot is made of. Buyers, give it up, gap through. Not the best gap in the world, but you get the idea. 
So this is what happened to that market after we left it climbing. You don't always get a retest like this. And it doesn't mean that price is going to zero. It was actually a very nice long trade as price did a pivot down in here. It's not a gap swap here, but it's a derivative. And again, we're looking at seller, 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 sellers, effort, 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 z pow, right? Effort reversed. All right, so that's how that market turned out. All right, so now let's go see if we can find some uh, examples for you to look at of um, gap swap, tail, and outside bar. I know we'll do. We'll look at the the daily. All right. So notice as you get to the pivot here, here's an example of a tail, right? See, they, I mean, understand buyers and sellers here, right? They reach it down, but the buyers pick it up. Aha, uh -huh, fooled you, right? So this becomes a marker for us. Now, there are times under a certain situation where I'm going to buy this. But either way, I can watch it. I know. I know there are buyers here. And then zoom. So as a quick shortcut to these things, you can look for the tail or gap or outside bar on the left, and then a gap on the right. Now I'm defining gap as a space between a wide range bar, bigger than the last three bars, and a space between the subsequent bar and the previous bar. See, there's a gap in here. So a tail or outside bar on the left, gap on the right. So this tells me they wiped those guys out. Now it doesn't always come back to retest, but it gives me some information about what a pivot's made of. I think there's a few more good examples in here. So let's look at two pivots. We have one swing here. Now notice the outside bar buyers they actually hit it and try gap quick retest same thing down here except it's not an outside bar this is the gap example price comes down see the gap this is effort this is this is showing us sellers hit it made new lows sellers hit it again these sellers just got whomped see that and so this would be a gap swap an outside bar swap and one of the things structure wise the the principles run through this see that this is a swing is what it is it's a swing. It's an isolated swing all by itself. It's a new high and then a higher low. And we can even draw a median line set on this. And you'll see it'll show us. All right, so those are some examples. Um, again, the main point were, was the principles that run through everything including the three types of trades, including the three types of trades. So, for instance, when these buyers take it up, this would be a type 1. Go look at the last blog. To push it, this would be a type 2. To buy the expansion and then continue, and then this would be a type 3, a reverse. Same thing down here. And again, refer to the previous blog. See, if I wanted to keep pushing the lower highs down, that'd be a type 1. If I wanted to sell this, that'd 
would be a type 2 to sell for the expansion. Or if I wanted to buy this, swap. So this little example has, can't get it all in here. This little example has the, the gap swap and you can see the swing. All right.